Am I the a-hole for ruining my sister's wedding? I, 24 female, was with my ex-fiancé Nathan, 27, since I was 13 and he was 15. He was my first love, my first everything. We got engaged when I was 20, and about six months after we found out we were expecting. Unfortunately, I miscarried a couple days later, and that was the worst moment of our lives. We always dreamed about starting a family early, so this was a major blow to us individually and to our relationship. I fell into deep depression, and I admit I was wrong for only caring for the lost I felt, and not my partners. We argued a lot. He partially blamed me and I accused him of not knowing how it felt to lose a life you were growing inside you. We were hurting each other, and decided to separate for a while. That while turned into a year. We still kept in contact. I went to therapy and worked on healing myself, and he even came to a few sessions with me. We decided to get back together shortly after my 23rd birthday. However, the relationship wasn't the same. He was somewhat withdrawn from me, and I thought it was because he still blamed me, and I was sick, overthinking and worrying. It got to the point where I was going backwards in my process, so I decided to snoop through his phone. That's when I found out during the year we separated that he had been confiding in my sister, 27, and it turned to something intimate. He cut it off when we got back together, but the damage was done. She was pregnant. It turns out our parents and some of our friends knew about this. I kicked him out and cut off everybody knew. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I got an invite to the wedding. Something snapped inside of me. I got drunk and I took a cab to my parents' house where they were throwing a party for them. Most of my family was there, and I basically showed up and gave a whole screw you speech to everybody. My sister ran upstairs in tears and my parents called me Nahal for ruining the prospect of their wedding. I said good, because nobody apologized to me. Everybody just kept saying we were separated. Things happen and people fall in love. I should be happy for them. And that the heart wants what it wants. The worst part is, my sister told me maybe my baby died for a reason so she could get her happy ending. I'm regretting getting drunk now because I'm not a confrontational person, but I was so upset. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Thanks for all the support and encouraging words so far. I know this update is coming so soon, but I like to tell you guys a joke. My sister called from an unknown number a couple minutes after I posted this. I've blocked everyone. She asked, well, more like demanded, that I return the ring fiancé bought, since it would be disrespectful to keep anything from him knowing they're starting a family. She said how immature of me for basically not sucking it up and being happy for her. She even intended to make me her maid of honor. I apologized to her for ruining her party and told her I'd mail the ring. But as for me and her, we're done. And to tell my parents the same. I'm here bawling my eyes out waiting on my therapist to finish with another patient. So I don't turn to bottle again and go off again. Now for the top comments. I started dating my ex when I was 15 and we broke up when I was 23. If he ended up dating my sister, knocking her up, and then marrying her, I would lose my crap. While barging into a party, screaming at them wasn't exactly the healthiest decision you can make. Personally, I say screw them. They clearly don't care about you, and if you got some relief from doing what you did, I say congratulations. Not today, Hull. I did get some relief in the moment, but now I'm just so drained. Also, do not send that ring back. Sell it, and use the money to help pay for your therapy. It's the least they can do. Holy crap, not day hole. My sister told me maybe my baby died for a reason so she could get her happy ending. Who the hell says that to anyone, let alone their sister? You had a miscarriage which is heartbreaking enough, and then your sister swoops in and steals your partner and has the audacity to say something like that? I'm angry for you right now. I am so sorry that you've had to go through this BS. She was there for me during the miscarriage. I cried on her lap, and she was the first person I called when the doctors informed me. That broke me so much. I don't know how much therapy is going to fix me. Not day hole. Your own freaking sister said maybe your baby died so she could get her happy ending? Oh, hell no. I would intentionally wreck their wedding for that stuff alone. I have to be honest. I would probably show up in a wedding gown. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for kicking my sister when she was down? My sister is going through a divorce right now and she's devastated. 
for more reasons than one. When she got married, both she and her husband had kids from past relationships. He had two boys who were preteens at the time. She had my niece who was four and my nephew who was 18 months old. Back when they first got engaged, members of the family warned her she should maybe slow down. Her husband's boys were not at all happy or welcoming of the growing family, and they showed no love or like for my sister nor her kids. My sister said we were wrong, and the boys would be great older brothers and bonus sons. She was certain things would be perfect and they would be a real family in no time. Five years later and the world has crashed around them. She and her husband are divorcing and while he wants to stay in her kids' lives as a dad, his boys want nothing to do with her or them. And there has been no communication with them in the five months since this thing started. All my sister can focus on is her feelings. How it's breaking her heart, how she misses the boys, how she doesn't know why they don't want her, etc. Nothing about her kids were devastated that the boys they called brothers, were encouraged to love and consider real brothers, never gave a crap about them, and won't even say hi if they pass each other by on the street. And I know from my nephew that it's happened more than once. It annoys me because my sister cries to all of us, and never talks about the effects it's had on her kids. The other day we were all at dinner and she was crying about it again. My niece and nephew were upset too, but she only focused on herself again. So, when my sister-in-law brought them into another room to cheer them up with some Switch games, I told my sister she needed to stop thinking about herself and start thinking about the two kids whose worlds were turned upside down. That she had been warned by us before, and while she could be sad, she needed to look at how much worse is it for her kids who never remembered life without their big brothers, and now they have to face they were never their brothers, and that the love was one-sided for the last five years. She told me I was way too harsh on her. And part of me wonders if she's right. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Someone had to stick up for the kids while she's busy wallowing in self-pity. In front of them, I don't think parents should shield their kids from everything even slightly bad or deny themselves emotion if kids are watching. But really, her son is what, six? Give the poor kid some security by maybe not sobbing all your divorce woes in front of him all the time. Not the day hole. It sounds as if this info was exactly what was needed saying, even if sister felt it was too harsh. Sister and kids need counseling, and I hope they get it. This is the kind of situation that's above the pay grade of family members, and a professional is indicated. It's the type of situation above the pay grade of even some professionals. I hope they get the best of the best. Not the day hole. Sometimes the truth hurts. Divorce is hard. But she also has small children to think about. She should try to get herself and the little ones into therapy to help get through this. That was suggested to her before, and she ignored it. Super frustrating. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not including my brother's wife with my friend group? To cut a long story short, my brother married a woman I knew from school. She was known as the mean girl, treated everyone like crap. Her mom had the same reputation, and everyone said it was learned behavior that started because their family was wealthy. She made junior and senior year of high school a nightmare for me and most of my friends with her attitude, and not helped by teachers letting her get away with it. I didn't see her for years, and my brother met her in a coffee shop. They hit it off, and it was a surprise when she turned out to be his girlfriend. It was also awkward. I don't like her. She's changed some, but she still has a streak of it in her, but better than she was back then. They got married last year and it hit my brother that she has no friends of her own. She had her family there, her mom who is still the biggest a ever, but no friends. And so he asked me if I would include her with my friends. He knows I have a solid group of friends and was hoping they would be her friends too. But none of my friends are on board, and honestly neither am I. So I told him no. There was a fallout from this. My brother is pissed and we haven't had a great relationship in months. He thinks it's cruel to not try when I know she has no friends, and it's childish to dislike her over the past, and that my friends are a group of a-holes for not being willing to try. I told him not everyone wants to be friends with a mean girl who made life hell at any point in their life, that sometimes being civil is the best you can muster, and that I have always been that. It's breaking our parents' hearts because he is insisting we can't be close again unless I make more of an effort. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments, not day home. 
Homie, your brother sounds like he's being her dad. Setting up friendship with a sibling's friend group after marriage? Weird. Why not his friends? My wife can't make friends. Let's not explore why not. Why can't you be her friend? Is an absolute bizarre hill to die on for Opie's brother. It's telling he is not organizing couples' outings with people he knows. If he cannot get his own friends to hang out with his wife, he can't expect his sister to force her group to welcome their high school nemesis. With a literal stranger, his wife would start the friendship in zero. With this group, it starts in negative 10,000. But with this group, he can try to make it his sister's problem instead of his. What a nahal. Not nahal. There is a reason she has no friends. Your brother married a school bully and wonders why no one wants her around. She's your sister-in-law now, and you'll have to include her in family events. But with your friends? No. Has your brother told his wife to try? To apologize? Why is it the tormented ones are supposed to try harder than the tormentor? This. There is a reason she has no friends. Your brother is being weird by asking this of you, and refusing to accept your no. Who cares if he stays distant? This way you see less of her. And maybe she'll learn something from this. Not today, Hull. She's probably making his life miserable, pushing to be included. And once she is, she'll make Opie miserable and alienate her friends. Not today, Hull. She can find her own friends. Not today, Hull. There is a reason she doesn't have friends. She must not have changed that much after all. She is a grown woman. She can make her own friends, providing she can rein in her meanness enough. Your brother has zero right to ask you that, and zero reason to be upset because you don't want to. This. There is definitely something wrong with her if she cannot make friends after high school. Last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay my half of our cancelled wedding? My ex-fiancé and I came from a very different cultural background, and our families live on entirely different continents. I explicitly told him before we even got engaged, that I always wanted a small, low-key wedding. I know that his culture have huge, lavish weddings, and he told me that this is what he wants. So when we got engaged, we had a long conversation which resulted in the compromise that we would have a big wedding in his home country, but drop some of the other aspects of his culture that I wasn't so comfortable with, or did not mesh well with my own culture, regarding living situation and raising children. For future children, we did not have any children. This was not a huge amount of customs. In fact, we just arranged to drop one and alter two. So they streamlined better with my own culture, and we were both as happy as possible with this outcome. We began making bookings, reservations, and paying deposits for our wedding. This was all out of his bank account. This is because we did not have citizenship in each other's countries, so it was far less complicated for everything to be paid from an account of the same country. The intention was that, after we married, it would be much easier to get citizenship, and once citizenship was approved, we would merge our finances. And at this point, it would not matter who had paid for the wedding, since all our money would be together. Three weeks before we were married, his mother and aunt got wind of one of the costumes we had arranged to alter, and lost it. Through conversations, they then found out about the other two, and eventually they threatened to disown him for being a bad son. They said it was cutting him off from his family, and that if that was what he wanted, they would make it easier for him. He begged me to change my mind, but I was firm saying this is what we decided together. I wasn't going to drop our agreements because his family don't like it, when there are plenty of aspects my own family are uncomfortable with. Relationships are about compromise and communication, and ultimately the first priority are the two people in their relationship, not their family. He told me if I wouldn't budge, then the wedding was off. I said I had made my compromise. I still wanted to marry him under our original conditions when we had spent a long time negotiating and originally felt or fair. Then he said that he had changed his mind and did not want to marry me. After a few weeks, he contacted me, asking me to pay him back for half the money he was unable to get back from the deposits we paid. Since it was so close to the planned date that we cancelled, and it was not a small amount of money. However, since he was the one who called off the wedding, and even at this point I would still marry him if he were to honor our original agreement, I don't think I am obliged to pay. I told him this, and he is very unhappy, since he now believes it is my fault that he cancelled for being unwilling to be flexible. Not day hall. I'm so sorry. You must be heartbroken. I know it 
probably doesn't feel like it now, but you dodged several bullets. His backing out of this wedding now due to family pressure. This shows you that he was always going to take his family's side in arguments, and best you find out now. Sounds like you would have been one of those spouses who were extremely enmeshed in their parents' clothes, and you would have had mother-in-law and sister-in-law interference all the time. He has shown that he's happy to make agreements with you and compromises, and then doesn't respect them. For example, he has zero regard for the agreements you had and the compromises you both made regarding the wedding. He's also now ignoring the agreements about the costs. And as for future kids, that agreement you made was never going to be respected either. I'm so sorry you've had to call off your wedding so close to the date. But much easier and better to discover how spineless and dishonest he is now, rather than having to go through a divorce and costly arguments later on. Not day whole. Also, tell him that his family was the one to essentially cancel the wedding, so they can reimburse him. Not day whole. 100% this. I hope you should tell him to send the bill to the aunties who had a fit. Not day whole. He didn't cancel the wedding. He did. He cancelled it after he decided to go against the agreement the two of you made. Since his family was in such an uproar that they threatened to disown him, tell him to get his money back from them. They can consider it the cost of getting their precious son back. Just want to add in regard to the agreement. If Opie were to be accused by him and his family of not having any honor, she could refute that he didn't honor his own promise towards her to begin with, and it was therefore him who dishonored her, not the other way around. Not day home. You dodged a bullet there. Under no circumstances you pay him a thing. He called the wedding off? He pays. Not to mention the cost of the wedding was much higher because of the things he wasn't willing to compromise on. Sounds like the unfortunately common person who thinks compromise means do what I want.